All right, and welcome back everyone. Today we're gonna to take a quick look at how to utilize Sapphire's new Trix 3.0 software to take full control of your Polaris GPU. Now in the system today, we have the XFX RX 480 reference design with a slight overclock at 1288 megahertz. Now, the big catch with the Polaris GPUs is they've implemented a new base clock boost clock system where you're going to have your base clock that you're going to stay above typically as long as you don't try to kill your card and then you're going to have your boost clock which like this card just as it states on Trix 3.0 is 1288 megahertz. Now if you look over at the GPU core clock, you're going to see that it's actually running around 1230 to 1250 megahertz, not quite the 1288 you were expecting. Now, there's a few ways to get that full potential out of your card without going crazy, but we're going to take a look around the Trick software real quick just to get kind of familiarize ourselves with where things are and what they're for. In the upper left hand corner, you have the gauge for the core clock as well as a temperature monitor right in there and your current fan speed here but you're going to adjust the core clock with this dial here you can cl click here and slot it but it's or slide back and forth here but the up and down arrows are much more efficient now power limit that's going to change the amount of power your video card is allowed to pull right now it's set to zero percent just like it comes out of the box same thing down here for GPU voltage it's at plus zero millivolts meaning is that it's, it's stock uh, specifications moving on over you have additional settings for here as well as hardware monitoring yada yada but for hardware monitoring we're using GPU Z from tech power up over on the right now you can set up custom fan curves if you wish but I found that trying to show you guys how this works while recording with OBS causes this thing to lock up really hard. So we're going to leave that alone. You can just go in here and set points that you'd like your fans to run at at certain temperatures. But for the sake of this we're going to leave it alone again so that we don't crash constantly. You can save these profiles here and your memory clock will be adjusted here. Now it does show your GPU usage. If you're wondering in the background, this is an overloaded scene from Arc Survival Evolved with epic settings at 1080p just to put a good stress on the GPU. Again, GPU is running mid 1200s, not quite the 1288 that it's you know can be boosting to. Couple different ways to get there. First way is directly right off the bat is to take the power limit and go to plus 50%. There, as you see on the far right, we're stuck at 1288 megahertz it's also rapidly accelerating the temperature. We're going to reset that. We do not want it to get that hot and stay that hot. So now we've dropped considerably down. The best way to hit that boost clock in my opinion as well as my testing has shown hang on just a second. We're going to try and get, get that. Alright, if you hear that, <laughs> we've cranked up the fan speed and we're going to leave that going. Now this is where you would go and adjust this to change these reference points. Because if you saw right about here, the temperature, or the fan speed dropped down to 9900s because the temperature went up to 89C. And that's when it's going to start to pull itself back and thermal throttle. So we're going to enclose that. We're going to leave that going. So if you hear the fan, I do apologize. It is a bit noisy but it's going to help us keep from going crazy later. Now the first thing you want to do is start with dropping your millivolts. I recommend increments of 10. So dropping it down you see instantly the core clock has come up just a bit. Now what's going on here is you're reducing the amount of power that it's pulling so it's going to boost as far as it can. It sees that it doesn't, it's got a little bit more power headroom so it's going to boost a little bit more. Now we're going to take it down to Take it down on to 20 and see what happens. You see there, it jumped up a little bit more. We're almost there to that 1288. Let's see if we can get there by dropping it down to 30. 30, if you notice the, well, it came up just a little bit. We're almost there, we're at 12, around 1280. So we're gonna drop it on down to uh, minus 35 millivolts. All right, so we're really, really close here. We're staying right around 1280, if not more. We want to come here and give it just a little bit of power boost. I'm going to let it boost it up and there. We've hit 1288 and we've stuck there. And do in doing so, we've reduced the power draw by a little bit by the reducing the voltage, but gave a little bit back by the power limit resulting in even though if we didn't have the fan speed changed, 
I, I found that the fan speed has something to do with when OBS is running. If it wasn't running, that wouldn't be a problem. So just keep that in mind if you're doing this on your own. So now we're up to 1288. All right, again, it's 70% fan speed. It's got us at 70 degrees Celsius. So that is my preferred way to get the absolute most out of this graphics card. And if you didn't change the fan speed, it would actually stay within lines of the stock fan profile and stay at the stock uh about 82, 83C while gaming, which is great. So you get the full performance of the card without any compromise at that. Now let's reset that. We're gonna leave our fan speed intact. Now you wanna get the absolute most out of it. So at this point, you'll want that custom fan curve. You'll want to go to 100% power limit. And then what you wanna do is start going up. I recommend go ahead and hit 1300 megahertz on the core and watch for it over in GPU-Z to maintain that speed. Now I recommend at this point going up every 10, about 10 megahertz, run a stress test, see that it's holding, see that you're not crashing. I know that we can continue this test with the core clock going up to 1320 before we have a crash. So again, we've signed up fluctuate, we've changed to 1320 here. At this point, once you find the maximum that you can without messing with the voltage, you can then go to adjust the memory clock. My personal experience has shown me that either 2000 megahertz or oh, went a bit too far or 2250. Anything in between there doesn't yield you much of anything. And I think it has to do with the timing straps that are going on with this uh, graphics card. So 2250 on the memory. We've changed to 2250 as well as 1320 on the core. Now, we're going to take a look right now at some screenshots that I took from running Fire Strike with stock at what we get. And then we're going to run it again at, at the optimized settings. And then again with it overclocked. Now, what you see here in the end is that the optimized is the best way to run this graphics card. And definitely what I recommend. Now, if you found this helpful or beneficial, feel free to like and subscribe. And we'll catch you all in the next one.